Uh, edit that out, please. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, we're going to teach you how to make ham and potato soup. Here's a picture of it. Manning, or whoa manning, the camera is my sweet wife Courtney, as we are in the fifth week of COVID-19 quarantine. Does that sound right? Sounds right. So John can't come here, but Courtney's doing a great job. Tonight I'm drinking a beer from Urban Artifact. It looks like a big old glass of juice, or maybe wine. It's real thick. <sighs> Delicious. All right, so we're filming the week after Easter, and I got a 10 pound ham for two people because I picked it up did the online delivery, or no, the online pickup. And they ran out of whatever ham I got, so they gave me 10 pounds of ham. So we're trying to use up ham, that's part of why we're doing this episode. But also, adapting to, uh, you know, not going to the grocery store all the time. I got a bunch of produce and like stuff that's nearing the end of its usable life. So this is uh, another, what I'm calling, something from nothing recipe. And hopefully, you'll be inspired to try to make something out of nothing too. So, let's look at how bad these potatoes look. Look at these guys. If I put these in the ground, I'd have potato, more potatoes in no time. This guy's so shriveled, I don't even know if we can eat it, but we'll try. All right, so, we're gonna start big pot. Today I'm using the Dutch oven. We're gonna heat it up to about medium heat. And we'll start with the mirepoix vegetables. So I've got an onion. I got uh, some rainbow carrots. They're rainbow because all the regular carrots sold out during panic buying. And I'm happy to announce that PGC, like big corporations, is going sustainable. So we've got a compost bin, and I have a, a I got a vermicomposting bin in my basement. So we'll be saving scraps to feed the worms. Courtney doesn't know how she feels about it. So we'll peel some vegetables. Look how different that carrot looks just by peeling it. This almost looks like a beet. I love beets. And really, do you have to peel them? No, you could not. They say the nutrition's in the peels, but I don't know. All right, there's our carrots. We're gonna use all of the onion, a whole one. So we'll chop the top off. Peel that onion. All right, so. There's our vegetables and we are going to chop them. Now, how do you want to chop your carrots? It's really more of a question of how do you want to eat your carrots. You want slices, you want small pieces, it doesn't really matter. I think that I'll just cut the larger ones in half. And you can see that the inside of the purple carrot is not purple. Interesting. And we'll give them a slice. Regular old carrots will do. I actually do have regular carrots. And I suggest you use whatever carrots you feel like. These are the oldest carrots I have, so trying to, trying to not let anything go to waste. These trying times. We go chopping that onion. And uh, similar to the carrots, how you chop it, it's how you're gonna eat it. So it's up to you. If it was Courtney, she would just tell me to keep chopping those onions so you can't even see them no more. That's correct. Everyone yeah, say watches, hi to Phil's Uncle Joe. Yeah, everyone say hi to my Uncle Joe. He watches every episode. I think of my family members, he probably watches more PGC than anybody else. Number one family fan, Uncle Joe. All right, there's our onions, there's our carrots. And last we have the inside part of a stock of celery, which we will just mince up. Now again, you could use higher quality pieces of the vegetables. But it's a stew. Like this is this is the perfect way to use all the shits that you are probably gonna throw away. Well, compost. All right. Now I got something special for tonight. It's like the other end of we're putting you know kind of leftover banged up vegetables into this dish. I got fresh lard. That's right, rendered pork fat. This came from. The Holcomb Havens Homestead, the Triple H, Jamie and Jimbo. We've uh, hung out with them before. Huge fans of their products. And uh, Jamie hooked me up with, I actually ordered a pint of lard and she gave me a quart. So thanks for that, what a hookup. It smells good. Now is lard good for you? I don't know, probably not. But I did read briefly that it, it's like maybe better for you than butter. So we're gonna, we're gonna cook with that today. Pop it right in. Two, spe two spoons to start. And I think, I mean, lard will last for a while, but it won't last indefinitely, so I'm, I think I'm gonna have to use this up. Lard has a, a pretty high smoke point, which can be advantageous in cooking. So you can see that it's melting pretty quickly. It's nice and clear. No impurities. 
And we'll move it around a little bit. Oh, it smells great. You smell that? It smells great. Lard. Yeah. All right. Turn our heat down just a little bit because it looks a little hot. And we'll get our veggies a going. Lots of veggies. But your health. Somebody's health. So we'll give those a uh, little saute. All right. Next up, it's going to be garlic. Again, I have nicer garlic than this, but trying to use up old, old shit that's somewhat questionable. Just like uh, old Joe Biden. Old and somewhat questionable. Hot take, right here. All right. And I got these, this like five smallish cloves of garlic. I think that's plenty. I'm just gonna give it a rough chop. We all make sacrifices in the uh, lockdown process. Mine is I don't have a garlic intern anymore. Feel my own garlic, and that's that. All right, so we'll set that aside for the most part. We'll add it to these a little bit later. And you gotta keep stirring these so nothing burns. All right, and then we'll start working on these questionable potatoes. Most of these are totally fine. And in fact, like this one as an example, I can just pop the root right off. And then it's like, you know, a normal, recognizable potato. It doesn't look like a freak of nature. But I will uh, get a bowl going. So I'm gonna peel each potato, chop each potato, and then we'll put it in water so it doesn't get brown or oxidized. That's the technical term for a brown potato. And typically, uh, when you make ham and potato soup, it's good to use, uh, what do they call them? Not a waxy potato. The opposite of a waxy potato. Do you know what that is? I don't know. Potatoes that turn soft when you cook them. Because you want softer potatoes to like kind of break down. That kind of adds to the creaminess for the texture of the soup, but I'm just, and so red potatoes are not that. They are a more waxy potato, but we're just trying to use them. So we will be back after I'm done peeling all these potatoes. Potatoes are done. Here they are. Big pile of potatoes. I'm going to drain the liquid off of them, at least most of it. We go over here to our vegetables. You can see they're cooking down nicely. The uh, purple carrots kind of turned everything a little purple. Go ahead and pop in our garlic. We'll stir. And we'll go ahead and pop in our potatoes too. Look at that, lots of potatoes. This is a potato soup. It features potatoes. All right. Next up, we're gonna add some flour over here. And we're doing this as making a lazy roux, kind of sort. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sprinkle some flour over these, all this good stuff. And we're gonna let it toast just a little bit. And then later we'll add a little bit of half and half or cream or something, and it'll thicken up. But doing this ahead of time lets us uh, skip a step, which would be making a separate roux. You know, we ain't got time for that. So I'm gonna use about a quarter cup of flour, which is half of this thing. I'm just gonna sprinkle it over everything. Kind of like this. And if we gotta add more later, we will, but I, I think that should do it. And I'll toss it. And just letting this go for a minute or two should cook out the flour taste. You don't want raw flour taste. Nobody likes that. Oh. All right, now while that's, that's doing its thing, we got ham. Here's this big bag of ham. It's all weird looking. I tried to pick some of the weirder ham that I didn't carve that well. Cause we're gonna chop it into pieces for the soup. You can put this in early but the longer you cook ham it might get dry so do you want your broth to taste more hammy or do you want your ham to taste better i don't know i think i'm gonna add it at the end closer to the end at least all right let's uh let's add some other stuff i've got uh turkey stock better than bouillon turkey stock i feel like that'll complement the flavor here nicely so we'll go ahead and throw in i think i'm just gonna scrape out the jar honestly you could use chicken stock Ham stock. I'd be really impressed if you, the viewer, had ham stock just chilling. Because not too many people <laughs> get excited about ham stock. Another option is uh, you could use the ham bone, the ham bone ham bone from the ham that you used. You could throw that in there with the stock. All right. And uh, again, we'll give things a toss. You can see, you know, we're starting to stick a little. It's sticking a little to the bottom. That's partly because of the flour. But, you know, we're, we're pretty nice and toasty now. But I don't want that stuff to stick to the bottom. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. And because I'm a maverick, I got a third of a beer that I didn't finish last night that I'm going to use to deglaze this, this soup. This is a, uh, I think it's just a pale ale. All right, just throw some of that in there. Nice. Knew I saved that for a reason, in addition to drinking it. And you can see that just with a little bit of beer, I'm able to scrape off some of that uh, weird stuff on the bottom. The, uh, the fond. Not the frond, the fond. All right, we need to get some liquid to make this a soup. So that's what we're gonna do next. One of my favorite things to do when adding a bunch of liquid to a soup is just to use a pitcher. And if it's just water, you can just, you don't even gotta take the lid out, pour it right in there. Look at that, I'm pouring it right through the lid. Look at this lid hole. Come see this, stop shaking your head. Look at that. You ain't even gotta take it out. It's brilliant. Saves time and dishes. 
All right, so let's pour it over our soup. Why are you shaking your head? What does it matter? This is so undignified. This is a something from nothing recipe. But you have the lid. Yeah, now I'm gonna put it away. I'm going into cardiac arrest. Courtney's mortified. Oh no, the pitch has been contaminated with water. Oh man, these are truly trying times, aren't they, Courtney? All right, so we'll turn up the heat and now we need to add some bay leaves. I just grab a couple. These are my dried Indian bay leaves. They're not like normal ones, but it's fine, no problem. It's usually nice to add some herbs. So I think I'm gonna, if I've got thyme, it would be the good one. I'm not totally sure if I have it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, fresh herbs, you could use those too. So just a little bit of, of thyme. You could add this at the end too. I'm gonna start with just a small amount. We'll probably add some later. All right, so we will get that simmering. And while we're waiting for that, I will chop up the ham. Now, how much ham do you want to add? Again, this will be largely determined by how much ham you'd like to eat. I am think I'm just gonna use all this ham. It might be too much. I'll use half the ham. Now you can see this is like some, some ham that I uh, chopped near the bone. And you can do ham chunks, but since this ham was sliced, we don't have that option. So, be little slices of ham. It's gonna be great. And you know, we got little bits from the side. You know, it was a pre-cooked ham, so that'll enhance the flavor, no doubt. No doubt. Another route, if you were gonna add the ham in early, I would recommend chopping it up super tiny. Almost like prosciutto or something. Because then, texturally, you won't really even notice like, oh, this is pretty dry ham. It's not good. Test the ham, passes the test. This looks like a good amount to me. Now we're just gonna wait for it to simmer. So we will be back momentarily. Don't go nowhere. Filming? We're rolling. All right, so we're now at a light simmer. Which means we've just got some, you know, light bubbling, but nothing, no rolling boil or anything like that. We're gonna give it a stir. We're gonna turn down the heat just a little bit and we will let these cook until the potatoes are done. So I will update you when the potatoes are done. It's pretty simple. All right, we've been simmering away for several minutes, several of them, and the potatoes are a little tender. They're not like totally tender, but you can like stick them with pork, it's fine. Now we're gonna add our ham. We want the ham to imbue its hammy flavor, but we don't want it to get too tough. Slip it on in there, we'll give it a stir, and we'll bring it back up to a simmer. And by the way, I should have said this before, telling you to do that. If you plan on blending any of the soup to thicken it up, do it before you add the ham. Nobody wants pureed ham in their soup. I'm not gonna do that today, so no worries about that. And we'll let it simmer for a few more minutes. Okay, so we let the ham and potatoes simmer. Potatoes are tender. Last thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of half and half. And also I'm gonna try to fish out those uh, the bay leaves. I don't need them no more. If you can fish out your bay leaves first, that would be ideal. Well, I found one of the three. So I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of half and half using this cup. We're gonna turn the heat all the way down and we'll give it just a little mix here. And that should help it make it a little more creamy, a little more thick. You can see it's kind of a cloudy and that's because we added flour early, but already it's like starting to thicken up pretty nicely. And you don't really want to boil the cream because it could curdle. So we're just going to have it on that low heat. We'll give it a couple more minutes and we'll serve it up. Almost done. All right, our soup's done. Now, you'll notice I didn't add any salt. There's lots of salt in that stock paste. There's lots of salt in ham. And I've tasted it just a little bit. I don't think it needs any salt. Tell you what, if you use chicken stock or something, the color of this might look a little better. It's kind of a brown. That's a little weird. Nice little ham in the middle. Doesn't that look nice? All right, let's give it a taste. It's still really hot. It's delicious. It kind of reminds me of my mom's ham potato soup, which by the way, I forgot to talk about that. My mom thickens ham potato soup with instant mashed potatoes. Just makes the soup and throws them in there. And it's a little weird. This is absolutely one of those dishes that is just like enhanced with hot sauce. So don't hold back on the hot sauce. But yeah, that's how you do it. I hope you enjoy this something from nothing dish that we made. We're not wasting nothing. We're beating the worms and ourselves. God bless. That's how you do it. See you next time. Bye bye. Oh.